and welcome to 3Q, where I interview industry professionals for just 15 minutes by asking three powerful questions. I'm your host, Rachel Vogel, and joining me tonight is Eric Giusti, co-founder of 10th Floor. Eric is known to have his finger on the pulse of pop culture, specializing in social media marketing and content creation for both superstar music artists and emerging talent. During his decade-long career, he's worked with artists like Katy Perry, Sam Smith, Halsey, and many more as a digital marketing expert for Capitol Records. He's led music strategy and partnerships for Facebook and Instagram internationally. And last but not least, he served as the partnerships lead at TikTok. And most recently, he's co-founded 10th Floor, a creative marketing endeavor that aims to empower artists to share their unique stories and build powerful connections with fans. So with all that said, Eric, how's it going? I sound so cool when you say that. You are. I it's not as cool. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded so professional. You are professional. Look at you. You look at your track record. <laughs> it's, it's just, the, you know, it's just a little industry we call music. So we like yep. to have, we like to have fun. For sure. All right. Well, are you ready for your first question? Yeah, but I don't know. 15 minutes. I can I can talk for way longer than 15 minutes. So you're going to have to cut me off. <laughs> Imagine for a second you're sitting down with your 25-year-old self. What one piece of advice would you give him on a personal note? And what one piece of advice would you give him from a business perspective? Well, I'm lucky because 25 is not too long ago. So I might push it back to, to my 19-year-old self prior to my time getting into the music industry. Um, but, you know, for me on a personal note, it would be to find passions and experiences outside of work. Uh, I think when you are young and eager, you really want to prove yourself in this industry. Um, you know, a lot of people want to get into this industry. It's, it's not easy. And so I think for me, I spent a lot of time putting all my eggs in the work basket, or I put aside relationships. I put aside friendships. I put aside a lot of hobbies and stuff because I wanted to be a hundred percent dedicated to my job. And, you know, now that I'm, you know, 10, 12 years past, I'm actually kind of reverting back to, wait a minute, who am I outside of work? And what else do I have to enjoy? What else do I have to experience? Uh, not not that loving music and loving your job is not a bad thing, um, but you know you get to a point where it, it becomes all consuming. I would say you know the majority of my friends are in the music industry. What, what we do for fun is we go to concerts and we do these things. Keep doing what you're doing in the music industry, but make sure that you're watering the garden outside of the industry. Otherwise, you're gonna have to, you know, go back and, and really figure those things out. I've been really lucky to have taken some time off from the industry to really kind of figure out what those passions were. And once I figured those out, I really saw I took it be able to take a step back and saw myself um, as a complete person. So from a personal standpoint, I would I would say that from a professional standpoint, and this kind of goes into what I've been saying, I would really tell myself to slow down and really savor the moment. Um, I grew up in Northern California uh, within an agriculture family, uh, with a family that you know tends to vineyards and tends to orchards, and we're the we're the grape pickers and the apple pickers. It's not that exciting, but. I grew as far away from New York City as as possible. So I remember being really young and going home and making myself a snack and watching TRL every day. That was all I wanted. And I just wanted to, that's all I want. I wanted to be a part of New York City. That's where the music was happening. That's where all the fans were. I wanted to get out of this small town and and that's what I did. So I was, you know, really eager at a young age to prove myself, prove my passion, prove that I wanted to be there kind of going into my personal recommendations was I put all my eggs in that basket and I was ruthless. I wanted to be seen. I wanted to be heard. I wanted a seat at the table. Um, and I wanted to do it quickly because for me, I wanted to kind of prove that I was extraordinary because in my head I was, I was extraordinary, but, you know, looking back, really taking the time to, to slow down, understanding it's not a race. And ultimately, it's less about what you achieve, but how you achieve it. And that is a hard skill to learn. 
you know, you see industry veterans who have plaques on the wall. So you're like, I want a plaque on my wall. So you'll do everything in order to get a plaque on your wall. But ultimately, it's less about the plaques. Listen, I have multiple plaques and they're a pain in the ass to move. <laughs> uh, and of course, I say that uh, from a place of privilege to even to even have plaques to begin with. Um, but really it's less about, you know, again, what you, what you come up with more about the relationships you make along the way, the, the friendships, um, the collaborations you make along the way. Um, I think from a young, young age, one of the mistakes I made was I thought I could do it all. Um, uh, I really wish I would have really taken the time. I kind of, it kind of reminds me of traffic. You know, we all want to get to our destination as soon as possible. So we put the pedal to the metal. But sometimes you have to, sometimes there's traffic. Sometimes you have to break. Sometimes you got to let people merge in front of you. Especially um, in LA. <laughs> especially in LA. There's a lot, a lot of traffic. Um, so I would. that's what I would say to my professional self is slow down. It's not a race. Savor the moment. Be kind. Be respectful to everyone around you. Um, because you never know when you're going to need to reach out to somebody for for help. And everyone at the end of the day is is vulnerable and and needs to sometimes ask for help. Absolutely. All great advice. <laughs> OK, moving along. Every industry has its sturdy little secrets, and we all know that it's no different in the music industry. And sometimes people think that's a bad thing, but that's not always the case. Sometimes they can be good. What's one secret you would like to share with our listeners about the industry? My fun one is if you ever find yourself working at a record label or any, you know, company that deals with music, my recommendation is always make friends with the ticketing person. That's, yep. that's your, that's your, that's your tip because the ticketing person is going to be the ones who can like, you know, slip you a ticket to the shows you want to see. So that's my little fun little tidbit. Um, shout out to all the amazing ticketing people that I've worked with in the past. I was not friends with them because they had tickets. I was friends with them because they were great people. One of the secrets that I would share, and maybe this is a little bit less of a secret, more of advice, is I think there's a lot of emphasis put on working with successful artists. That's what you know. That's what you want to do. You want to build artists to these huge successes and. Um, you know, people love to attach their name to success wherever they can in order to get the promotions. But I think one of the the, the fun secrets or, or tips that I kind of learned along the way is always listen to the music you're given because you never know what you're going to really fall in love with and be passionate about. There's, you know, a few artists that, that come to mind, but uh, one in particular um, was a band out of Denmark and for me, like you weren't necessarily at the time a, a huge priority, but I listened to the music and I loved it. And, you know, they didn't last too long on the label I was at, but I still to this day, this was six, seven years ago. I still to this day listen to every song on my release radar on Spotify because every song is really, really good. Um, so always listen to the music. You'll never know. Um, what you're going to fall in love with and be a fan of forever. There's so many up and coming artists and sometimes people are afraid to get involved with them because they don't want to attach themselves because they're not sure, but they love the music, like you said. So don't be afraid. Reach out to artists and engage. And I mean, K Katy Perry's story is the ultimate is the ultimate story there. It's she was signed to um, signed to a record label and she had a team behind her at the record label that was really passionate. Unfortunately, that record label did not see the vision for Katie at the time. And those label people were so passionate that they pitched her to another label um, that wanted her. And they all left that label to go to the new label <laughs> just to follow Katie. And they took that risk. They stuck their neck out. They say, hey, we disagree with the decision that was made. But ultimately they made the right one because they invested in one of the biggest pop stars of all time or who was to become one of the biggest pop stars of all time. So sometimes you do need to um, stick your neck out for the little guy who might not have that viral TikTok moment yet or might not have this. But if you notice that they have something special to share, then get behind them, stand up for them, say their name in meetings 
um, because that's really what it's going to take to at least make it work within this like label mindset. Nowadays, artists don't necessarily need a major label to find success, which I think is a, a, a good thing and a really interesting um change to the industry so but always stand up for what you're passionate about for sure okay here we go final question throughout your career i can only imagine you've been asked plenty of questions whether it was for an industry conference the media or maybe even a promotion but throughout all of those interviews and all of those questions there has to be one that you've never been asked but would have liked to so what is that question and what would be your answer first of all i think this is a really good question and i really struggled to think about what question I'd be asked in a way that's not selfish, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. I think ultimately people love to talk about themselves. Um, people love to learn about themselves. Um, but, you know, how do you get asked a question that can um, be relatable to a broader sense? Um, and it's actually the, the question I thought of is probably a very common question, but it's not something that everyone's anyone's ever asked me, but it's something I've always had an answer prepared for. And that question was, what's the best advice I've ever gotten? Um, very common question. I've never gotten asked. And my answer to that question was, or is, it's not if you get laid off, it's when you get laid off. Not necessarily the happiest answer, but it's a really important piece of advice, not only for the music industry, but for working at corporations as a whole. Um, I got that advice on a really rough day. This was really early in my career during a moment of reorganization in the music industry. And um, a lot of really great people, people I were friends with, I saw unfortunately lose their jobs um, in a single day. And I was devastated. Um, and I remember going into an industry veterans office and I was crying and I, and I, and I couldn't understand why I was, why I was saved, why other people had, had gone and this industry veteran said, you know, it's not if you get laid off, it's when you get laid off. And um, for me, it's a good reminder to, ch again, cherish your experiences, um, really uh, be in the moment, be nice to everybody, um, because you'll never, again, you'll never know who you're going to need to lean on for support or reach out to, because things in corporations change very quickly. Um, this is a really tough time um, for people as, you know, companies are scaling back workforces in fear of recessions. I have so many talented friends who are out of work right now who have been some of the most successful people within the industry. And, and it's hard. So, um, you know, for me, for a lot of it, and, and I've been laid off as well. And I think for me, for the longest time, I thought, wow, I'm immune I'm immune. I must be really special because I've made it, you know, 12 years without having to deal with any of the reorgs or any layoffs. And then, it, you know, and then it happens. And then you, you realize, oh, wait, I was never immune to begin with. Um, and so I think coming into any type of corporate environment, it's, you know, really good to remember things can go away in an instant, be nice to everybody. And, um, take it one day at a time. Uh, you'll always, you know, if and when something happens and, and you know, unfortunately it does, you know, sometimes you need to be able to take a step back, really see what you, what you want to do next, evaluate. And, you know, I've always seen people who've gotten laid off who always kind of land on their feet eventually. It might not be in two months. It might not be in six months. It might not be in a year, but it's all a change with the times. So it's just a good reminder to always stay humble, um, always be respectful of people. Um, and, you know, no one, no one is immune. And to the people who have gone their careers without being laid off or made those smart strategic moves, they're exceptions to the rule. They're not the rule. Well, Eric, it has been so wonderful having you on the podcast. Thanks so much for taking the time. To everyone listening, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Stay tuned for next week of 3Q, where I interview industry professionals for just 15 minutes by asking three powerful questions. See you next time. <laughs>